Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Horseshoe with Stompin' Tom Connor. Heave high, heave high, oh, the best man in Ottawa was my Farage, oh, my Farage, oh. Big Joe Mafra paddled in the Mattawa all the way from Ottawa in just one day. Big size, French fries, how they love tomatoes. So dress them up with Heinz ketchup, ketchup loves potatoes. But the spud from the bright red mud, rolling down the highway, smiling. The spuds are big on the back of Bud's rig. They're from Prince Edward Island. They're from Prince Edward Island. Well, howdy, friends and listeners of the Wayback Country Jamboree and Morning Show. This here is your old host with the most country western music. Johnny Woodlock, inviting y'all into a three-hour celebration to life and the music of our king of country music in Canada, Stompin' Tom Connors. So sit back, relax, or just get those old stompin' boots out for some foot-stompin' good time with Stompin' Tom Connors on what would have marked his 88th birthday. Good morning to my listeners, coast to coast. And the bridge came tumbling down, and 19 men were drowned. And the medical corps couldn't be too sore of the rest of the men they found. On those floor, if it gets a little chilly, you can close the door. Tilsonburg. Tilsonburg. It was Tilsonburg. Tilsonburg. The back still aches when I hear that word. You heard my answer. It's one I hope you'll understand. It's just my way of kind of saying thank you to the people of this land. And it doesn't matter really where you're from, you can spread the word around. Wherever you find a heart that's kind, you're in a part of my stomping ground. Well, really, it's Canada that still has the stories that should be told. And lots of them, for now and for always. Uh, good morning to each and every one of you in downtown Kingston listening area. This here is your old host with the most country western music, Johnny Woodlock, the host of the Wayback Country Jamboree. And I'd like to especially dedicate this program of the Wayback Country Jamboree to the following friends and fans of Stomp and Tom, who always loved and admired this man for his courageous yet very musical life and career. First, I'd like to dedicate this program to the memory of three great family members who first introduced Introduced me to the music of Stomp and Tom many years ago as a child. They are, of course, my late Granny Marg, also my late Papa Willie B, who both raised me to love the true sound of Canadian country music, and also in loving memory of my late partner and best friend Miss Jenny, also known as Miss Valma LaPointe, who always admired the Stomp and Tom legacy and legend. I'd also like to mention that this program will be specially dedicated to John Arsenal and also Brian Lund- who originated the online Facebook page called the Stomp and Tom Connors Fan Club. And finally, I'd like to send a very special dedication out to my beloved mama, Dawn, and her partner, my stepfather, Big Daddy Al. And lastly, but not least, family of the late great Stomp and Tom Connors, which includes his widow and the much beloved lady behind the man we all knew as Stomp and Tom Connors, Miss Lena Connors, and also for their son, Tom Jr. And also in loving memory of the man himself, the man of the land, and the man who lived these songs, and also lived this story. Stomp and Tom Connors, also known as Thomas Charles Connors. For these fellow names, this program is lovingly dedicated to you all. Welcome in, friends, and good morning to my listeners. I've been all across this country, from the East Coast to the West, and I've been asked about a thousand times what places I like best. Well, I've had to base my answers on the friendly people I have found. And if you're inclined to take the time, this is where you'll find my stomping grounds. Just take a little piece of PEI and old Saskatchewan, Nova Scotia and New Brunswick, Quebec and Newfoundland, Alberta and Manitoba, Ontario and BC, and you'll have found the stomping grounds of all my friends and me. And you'll have found the stomping grounds of all my friends and me. Yeah, there was a time with a buddy of mine when a freight train was our abode. And we found people in this here land that would help a guy along the road. Some of them lived in the country and others lived in town. But these are the people that made me proud to say this is my stomping grounds. Just take a little piece of PEI and 
old Saskatchewan, Nova Scotia and New Brunswick, Quebec and Newfoundland, Alberta and Manitoba, Ontario and BC, and you'll have found the stomping grounds of all my friends and me, and you'll have found the stomping grounds of all my friends and me. And now you've heard my answer, it's one I hope you'll understand. It's just my way of kind of saying thank you to the people of this land. And it doesn't matter really where you're from, you can spread the word around. Wherever you find a heart that's kind, you're in a part of my stomping grounds. Just take a little piece of PEI and old Saskatchewan, Nova Scotia and New Brunswick, Quebec and Newfoundland, Alberta and Manitoba, Ontario and D.C. And you'll have found the stomping grounds of all my friends and me. And you'll have found the stomping grounds of all my friends and me. Just take a little piece of P.E.I. And old Saskatchewan, Nova Scotia and New Brunswick, Quebec and Newfoundland, Alberta and Manitoba. It was a big waiter down in the, the King George Hotel in Peterborough. And uh, I used to stomp my foot anyway. And I, at that time, I was carrying a board around with me so I wouldn't uh, destroy the carpets in the hotels where I played. Otherwise, I couldn't get a job. So anyway, uh, this waiter, I come in one night, and this waiter, Boyd McDonald was his name, and he came in. He says, here he is, folks, once again, stomping Tom. And from that second on, I knew, uh, I guess, forever that that's what my name was going to be as long as I picked up a guitar and sang. Good morning, friends and listeners of the Way Back Country Jamboree and Morning Show. This series, your old host with the most country western music, Johnny Woodlock. For this morning, I would like to invite y'all into the Wayback Country Jamboree, coming to you as we always do via the studios here at the Woodlock Ranch and Studios in Cornwall, Ontario, and also being heard worldwide at www.cfrc.ca, as well as locally on your local radio dials at CFRC 1019 FM. With all that mentioned, I'd like to welcome y'all in to this weekend's program as we celebrate Celebrate what would have marked the 88th birthday of the man of the land, Stom and Tom Connors, the king of Canadian country music, second only to Wolf Carter, the father of Canadian country music. The man I'm speaking of, of course, is no stranger to Canadian country music fans, or even those who aren't country fans will still know the name of my tribute artist today, Stomp and Tom. Tom was born Thomas Charles Connors in St. John, New Brunswick, on February 9th, 1936, and at the at age of seven, he was taken from his mother's side and put into a foster home on the island of Prince Edward Island and would know Skinner's Pond as his new home. Today, he is greatly remembered for his Canadian country music songs as well as writing his way into the Canadian country music history books. Tom sadly passed away March 6, 2013 at the young age of 77, but as I mentioned during his time here, he lived his life to the fullest. I like to remember the music and the man and the story of this true pioneer of Canadian country music on, yes, what would have marked his 88th birthday. Even though Tom has been gone now 11 years this coming March 6th, his legacy and his music will live on forever into the decades and generations to come. Let's open today's program with the tribute song by the Ottawa Valley legend, Freddie Dixon, and simply titled The Ballad of Stomp and Tom. Then we'll hear a live version of Stomp and Tom's signature song, Bud the Spud, as we Recorded and borrowed from the live archives of CBC Television and the Country Time program, which aired originally June 20th of 1970. So as Stomp and Tom said in his final letter to his fans and friends, help keep the maple leaf flying high and be the patriot that Canada needs now and in the future. Well, Tom, we are still trying to pay tribute to you and your contribution to Canadian history and keeping that flag and that maple leaf flying high and into the future. Future. So with that, this one's for you, my old friend. Happy birthday in heaven. Now here's a story that I'd like to tell about a poor country boy that sure done well. Never once did his hat band swell. My man is Stompin' Tom Connors. 
Well, he left his home at the age of 13. A tall, lanky kid like a long string bean. Holes in his pockets and holes in his socks. Took on the job at the waterfront docks. Now, Tom wasn't much to staying around or settling down in any one town. Because the whole of Canada was his stomping ground. And by golly, he wanted to see it. With his muddy Steve foot and his get iron hand, he thumbed his way across this land, riding the rails and hitching them trucks, living kind of lean on a lot of good luck. Then one day, back in 64, he got stuck in Timmins with the wolf at his door. Stopped on the maple leaf for three or four. Had 35 cents, we needed five cents more. Well, the barman looked. Tom's guitar, and he could tell by their looks they traveled far. I said with a smile, I set the beer in the bar. You play me a couple of songs. Well, the boss he liked what Tom was singing, and the people and money that Tom was bringing. And Tom stayed on and on and on, not bad for a country singer. Stomping board, he's played them all from the Horseshoe Tavern down to Massey Hall. And he might be coming your way this fall, and I sure hope that you don't miss him. So when you're driving or listening to your radio, you hear songs like Bud the Spud or Muffra Joe. The songs about Canada, and they're on the go, and they're sung by Stomping Tom Congress. So I wish him well, and I wish him the best, for he's paid his dues more times than the rest. He's a hell of a man, he stood the test, he's my good friend, Stomper Tom Connors. So I wish him well, I wish him the best, for he's paid his dues more times than the rest. He's a hell of a man, he stood the test, he's my good friend, Stomper Tom Connors. Tom Connors. Tom Connors, Tom Connors, Tom Connors. With a guitar under one arm and a stomping board under the other, here's Stomping Tom Connors. It's Bud the Spud from the bright red mud, rolling down a highway, smiling. The Spuds are big on a back of Bud's rig. The Plum Prince Edward Island, the Plum Prince Edward Island. Yeah, from Charlottetown or from Summerside, they load him down for the big long ride. He jumps in the cab and he's off with the pride of bagels. He's got to catch the boat to make Furman Pine, and he hits up that old New Brunswick line. To Montreal he comes just a flying with another big load of potatoes. It's Bud the Spud on the right red mud, rolling down a highway smiling. The Spuds are big on a back of Bud's rig, the from Prince Edward Island, the from Prince Edward Island. The Ontario Provincial Police don't think much of Bud. Yeah, the cops have been looking for the son of a gun that's been ripping a tire off the 401. They know the name on the truck shines up in the sun. Green Gables. But he hits Toronto and it's 7 o'clock when he backs her up again the terminal dock and the boys gather round just to hear him talk about another big load of potatoes. It's Bud the Spud from the bright red mud rolling down a highway smiling. The Spuds are big on a back of Bud's rig. The from Prince Edward Island. The from Prince Edward Island. Like the spuds from the island best Cause they'll stand up to the hardest test Right on the table So when you see that big trucker rolling by Wave your hand or kind of wink your eye Cause that's Bud the Spud from old P.I. With another big load of potatoes It's Bud the Spud The right red mud Rolling down the highway smiling Because he's got another big load of the best dug gun potatoes that's ever been growed. And they're from Prince Edward Island. From Prince Edward Island. (laughs) 
Well, I don't know whether I'd rather keep him in plywood or keep him in boots, one way or the other. <laughs> I think it'd be pretty expensive. I actually wrote the song in uh, Peterborough, uh, Ontario, and uh, I wanted to write a, a song about the Prince Edward Island potatoes, and a friend of mine uh, who was uh, another country artist, uh, Bud Roberts, he uh, wanted me to write him a truck driving song, and uh, the the two the two songs were coming into my mind uh, at the same time, and I was trying to write one and I couldn't get it written, and I tried to write the other one and I couldn't. So, uh, what actually happened? I uh, put the two of them together and I got the potatoes uh, on the back of the truck, and I was away with a song called Bud the Spud. Well, yes, friends, following those opening songs, we're back here on the Way Back Country Morning Show in Jamboree. Let's get this program underway by opening the Jamboree with a few special dedications, as we always do. First of all, for Mama Don and Big Daddy Al, I'd like to send out a song by a man who Stomp and Tom classed as one of his earliest musical heroes and influences, none other than old Montana Slim himself, Wolf Carter. And from Wolf, we have an all-time classic titled Apple Blossom Time in Annapolis Valley. Then we'll follow with a song going out in loving memory of two special angels I knew in life. First, my late granny, Marg, mum's mum. And also in loving memory of my late partner in life and my best friend for all too short of a time, Miss Velma LaPointe. Memory of these two ladies, it'll be Hank Snow, a man who Stomp and Tom always classed as an early influence, but Hank was very rude to Tom over the years. Many stories in the Stomp and Tom books that Tom wrote many years ago. Too many to give great detail here, but I will say that Hank wasn't very fond of Tom, and as much as Tom was of Hank. So in honor of these two ladies, it'll be an all-time classic titled My Nova Scotia Home by the Singing Ranger. Then we'll wrap up with a song going out to my late father, Papa Willoughby. And this song was one of Papa's favorites as far as I can remember and it's going to be tom connors with the ketchup song and also this song is going out for my dear friends in guelph ontario john and kathy arsenal for them it'll be a classic by stomp and tom from the early 70s and the ketchup song with that i hope y'all enjoy these classics this morning and good morning to my listeners there's a valley leading down from the great atlantic to the last word where all beauty can be found Many years I've lived among its beauty splendor And to all the world I wish this message known When it's apple blossom time in Annapolis Valley Where all nature is in bloom to beautify Hey, hey man When it's apple blossom time in Annapolis Valley where God's hand has made a land of paradise There's a place that's dear to me in Annapolis Valley I should know It's our little dream house nestled among the hills Silvery moonbeams dancing across the golden blossoms It brings back those fondest memories to me When it's apple blossom time in Annapolis Valley where all nature is in bloom to beautify When it's apple blossom time in Annapolis Valley Where God's hand has made a land of paradise Take her away, Slim Hear that boy play that banjo Hey, hey, man Wish I could play like that Shadows fall in Annapolis Valley Sweet perfume from apple blossoms fill the air There's no other place for me for I'm so happy You said it, where Mother Nature has the beauty to compare Now the chorus, when it's apple blossom time in Annapolis Valley Where all nature is in blue to beautify when it's apple blossom time in Annapolis Valley Where God's hand has made a land of paradise I feel like yodeling Odele, ole, 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 ole. Cherish near the blue Atlantic skies Where the shores down in Cape Breton Bids the golden sun to 
rise And the fragrance of the apple blossoms praise the Duke is long Back in dear old Nova Scotia, a place where I was born the Scotian and the Ocean Limited and the Maritime Express Their mighty engines throbbing make their way towards the west And the sturdy fishing schooner sways so lazily to and fro Nova Scotia is my sanctuary and I love it so Out in Vancouver, kiss the blue Pacific tide I have crossed the snow-capped rocky Saw the wheat fields golden blaze Headed back to Nova Scotia Where contented cattle graze Where the pretty raw the red brass Seeks its loved ones in the tree And the French dialect in old Quebec Keeps calling out to me it seems to say beyond your way there's a welcome at the door Where the kinfolks are waiting on that gate Atlantic shore St. John, New Brunswick. I was orphaned when I was a small child. I got adopted out of the orphanage when I was around six or seven years old to uh, Mr. and Mrs. Russell Elward in Skinner's Pond, Prince Edward Island. Hi, I'm Bill White of the White Pine Bluegrass Band. And you're listening to my good friend Johnny Woodlock on Way Back Country Jamboree, right here on CFRC. Keep right on listening and enjoy the good music. When I die, I'll take my rest down on song. Why, 
Yes, friends, once again, it's that time in the program to pay tribute to the mighty Ottawa Valley, the valley we call our second home here at the Wayback Country Jamboree Morning Show. And as we send us into the valley for this Sunday morning, I'd like to send some special love out to Uncle Ray and Aunt Margaret Chapisky up there on the banks of the mighty Bonacher in Eganville, Ontario. For them today, it's going to be a classic by a legend of great fame of the Ottawa Valley, none other than Mr. Ottawa Valley himself, who was to the Valley what Storm and Tom was to Canada, and of course it's going to be Mr. Mac Beatty and an all-time classic titled This Ottawa Valley of Mine. Then I'd like to send a special hello out to our dear friends in our prior Ontario, Vic and Linda May Garbett. And Vic has a great classic country show every Sunday night over CJHR Valley Heritage Radio, beginning at 7 o'clock. For them today will be another friend of mine, Tom Wilson, and my Leeds County home. Then we'll wrap up with the legend among legends of the Ottawa Valley. It'll be the first lady of the Ottawa Valley Country Music Hall of Fame, Julie Lynn and her own version of Stomp and Tom's classic Big Joe Muffra. With that, I hope everyone enjoys the highlights of the Auto Valley this morning and thank you for listening to the Way Back Country Jamboree, everybody. Welcome in, friends. Come gather around me and pay good attention A story I'll tell you in rhyme Of the beautiful land that I'm honored to mention This Ottawa Valley of mine From the lake of two mountains to Mattawa town Smith Falls to the Gatineau line It's a land of great size and a sports paradise In this Ottawa Valley of mine Now the people that live here They don't quarrel or quibble They work hard but like a good time It's the home of step dancing The good old time fiddle This Ottawa Valley of mine From the hills of Eden River to Buckingham's Mills From Shovel to Perth on the Tay For music and mirth there's no place here on earth Like the Ottawa Valley they say Football in baseball we're able But hockey is our own design In the big hall of fame We are the hockey cradle This Ottawa Valley of mine There's the Boucher's Frank Niver Bill Cowley, Todd Sloan The Geese, Rex and Finney gets two We have played it and made it The big hockey cradle And we're mighty proud of it too of Mayor Charlotte Whitten, our capital city, and the Parliament building so fine. And perhaps I might mention the name Blue Laurentian, this Ottawa Valley of mine. So join us a while in some tanny out here, and I'm sure you will have a good time. When we drive the big rafts down the Ottawa River in this good old valley of mine. This Ottawa Valley of mine. Oh 
She loves me, that's the way it's gonna be From that spot I'll never, never roam Roll on, silver moon Lord, I'm gonna be there soon Heading for my old East County Hall Heep, hine, heep, hine, ho The best man in Ottawa was Mufferajo Mufferajo Big Joe Mufferal paddled into Mattawa All the way from Ottawa in just one day Hey, hey On the river Ottawa The best man we ever saw was Big Joe Mufferal The old folks say Come and listen and I'll tell you what the old folks say Now they say Big Joe had an old pet frog Bigger than a horse and he barked like a dog And the only thing quicker than a train upon a track Was Big Joe riding on the bullfrog's back He Best man in Ottawa was Muffer Joe, Muffer Joe. Now they say Big Joe used to get real wet from cutting down timber and working up a sweat. And everyone will tell you around Carlton Place that the Mississippi dripped off of Big Joe's face. Heep high, heep high ho. The best man in Ottawa was Muffer Joe, Muffer Joe. Joe had the portage from the Gatineau down to see a little girl he had in Kimville town. He was back in forts many times to see that gal And the path he wore became the Rideau Canal Heep high, heep high ho The best man in Ottawa was Mufferajo Mufferajo Big Joe Mufferall paddled into Mattawa All the way from Ottawa in just one day Hey, hey All the river Ottawa The best man we ever saw was Big Joe Mufferall The old folks say Come and listen and I'll tell you what the old folks say Now they say Big Joe put out a forest fire Halfway between Red Blue and Old Dan Pryor He was 50 miles away down around Smith's Falls But he drowned out the fire with five spitballs Oh, kid! Heep high, heep high ho The best man in Ottawa was Mufferajo Mufferajo Well, he jumped into the Calabogie Lake real fast And he swam both ways to catch a cross-eyed bass But he threw it on the ground and said, I can't eat that So he covered it over with Mount St. Pat Oh, no! Yeah, that's a thing in itself. Uh, after I uh, I landed in uh, St. John, New Brunswick, uh, when I was uh, about 13, uh, going on 14, and uh, I I always looked around uh, for a woman with uh, black hair and, uh, and a thumb off at the first joint uh, on the right hand, and. Uh, that's all you remembered of your mother? Uh, that's all, and I remembered her name, of course. And uh, she often told me when I was a kid, too, that if uh, if we ever got separated or anything, that uh, she pointed out to me about the birthmark on my neck, just a small one, and that she'd always know me by that. I was born beside that river, that mighty river, that rolling river. Hello, this is Tom Wilson of Border Bluegrass. You're listening to my good friend Johnny Woodlock on Wayback Country Jamboree on CFRC. Stay tuned for classic country music. And the St. Lawrence River is my home. Well, yes, friends, once again it's that time in the program to welcome our very special first guest of two onto the Wayback Country Jamboree Morning Show this morning. This next guest was a dear friend of Stompin' Tom's for many years, as well as part of his backup band for many years as well, and the leader of the singing group known as Whiskey Jack. It is a true honor to welcome Duncan Frimlin onto the program this morning, and this man, as mentioned, spent many years trying traveling and working alongside Stomp and Tom Connors. So with that, this is going to be part one of a two-part interview. 
with my dear friend Duncan Frimlin. Following this part one of a two-part interview, we will hear a song that speaks about Stomp and Tom's beliefs and his patriotism during the 1993 era. I would like to mention that I do apologize if this song upsets anyone out there, as it is not my intentions only to show the patriotism that Stomp and Tom showed during his songwriting. So with that, it'll be Believe in Your Country. So with that, here is my dear friend, Duncan Frimlin. How did you get associated with Stomp and Tom originally? It was uh, back in 1990 when Tom was making a comeback. He had been off the business, off the road for many years. And he, if you recall around that time, those of us old enough to remember those years, we had been going through Meech Lake fiasco and the free trade discussion. And the country was kind of having a bit of a a identity crisis and the pressure was on tom the you know the 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 the, the ultimate canadian to come back and and uh, it played itself out that way in the subsequent months but anyway i was asked at the time by the promoter to manage the tour itself it was going to be an ambitious 75 city six month uh uh tour across the country playing every if you can imagine, 75 dates. Uh, we played yes. big places, sure. small places, but the ma- vast majority of them were places that most acts wouldn't even consider going to because they were too small. Uh, so 75 cities, or 75 towns and villages in Canada doesn't leave. <laughs> after you get rid of Vancouver, Montreal, Toronto, Winnipeg, Regina, Calgary, etc., it doesn't leave too many others. So the majority of them were smaller venues. But anyway, it was an ambitious... Uh, venture and I took it on and uh, got to know Tom pretty well on that tour he uh, called me we became friends I used to go up to the house he called me to play banjo on some of his recordings and and then in 1993 took me out for for dinner one Sunday afternoon after a few games of chess and asked me if Whiskey Jack would uh, record an album with him which he had just written Um, it was it was called Dr. Stompin' Tom A he hadn't recorded it. Yet. Yes, I remember it yeah. well. Yes, so he hadn't yes. recorded it yet, but he thought Whiskey Jack would mm-hmm. make a good uh, background uh, um, uh, music for the for the songs, and which turned out to be the case. And uh, so that turned into another cross country tour. And uh, so by the end of that, you know, he and I were pretty tight. We'd had we'd had a couple of run ins, and uh, decided that uh, we liked each other even when we were in a bad mood. So uh, after that. Um, I'd get a call sometimes to come up to the house and play music with it for his birthday parties or barbecues or whatever. And uh, so, and you know, I used to visit from time to time. And yeah, so over the years. And then when he died in 2013, I realized, of mm-hmm. course, I wasn't going to get any more calls to come up and play at his birthday party. So in 2014, I hosted my own birthday party for him in downtown Toronto. And, and I had a lot. It sold out in a matter of minutes and realized that there was a uh, fairly uh, active uh, uh, audience. Demand yeah. for so it. yes. I, yeah. Next thing you know, I'm getting offers to perform the show that I did in 2014. And here I am. Ten years mm-hmm. later, man. Like, what's going on? I never thought this exactly. was going to Holy jeez. <laughs> but do you find his popularity has grown since his passing? No, it's changed. Uh, I can't say as it's it's grown because there is a generation now that really don't know who he is or or what he is. That's true, sadly. Yeah, yes. or what his You're contribution right. was because he contributed more to the Canadian conversation than just music. I mean, he was, you know, he was the voice of. Uh, he spoke for a def- definite demographic. Um, his oppose- his opposition to free trade, the whole idea of the Canadian economy going north south rather than east west, did not sit with- well with him. And he spoke for an awful lot of people at the time that were speaking out against free trade. Um, and he also thought that uh, the you know corporate Canada, or cor- the USA, was basically buying the free trade uh, election and the free trade agreement. So he was pretty okay. pissed off about that. And and um, yes. in the Meech Lake thing, he didn't think too much about that either. He had a very strong connection with French Canada. His best friend and songwriting partner was a French Canadian, and they were that was about as close a friend as he's ever as he ever had in his life. 
So his connection with French Canada was more than just a typical maritime English Canadian. <clears throat> he uh, you know, he okay. felt pretty strongly about about opposing Meech Lake and thought that the special status would not sit well with uh, with the country, would not do anything to keep the country together. So he was pretty much against that too. So in nineteen the, on in the on the nineteen ninety three tour, he was extremely vocal against Brian Mulroney and his government over again. Yes, he was, yeah. including a song called. How do you like it now? Well now, how do you like that GST, the loony and free trade? What do you think of Mulroney now and the promises he made? They cooked our moose and the Canada goose while the eagle flies above. And some can't wait now to separate from the land they used to love. From the northern mines to the maritimes, the checks are getting small. And they'll tax away all your pension pay if it ever comes at all. Well, that and, you know, if you don't believe your country should come before yourself, that's a pretty draconian, you know, there's no his, there's no doubt as to where he stood when he sang that song. So, you know, he... Goodbye, Jim and Jackie. Goodbye, John and May. We hate to see you leaving. Bound for the USA But if you don't believe your country Should come before yourself You can better serve your country By living somewhere else that's he sort sure. of positioned himself as a as more than just a singer songwriter. He put, positioned himself as a as a as probably at the time the ultimate flag waving Canadian. And he and he was criticized pretty seriously for that. Um, he certainly wasn't a friend of corporate Canada at the time. And uh, and you know he did have run ins over the years with radio and and TV and that's you know, for sure. news, newspapers. Yeah, that's that kind sure. of, you know when I was mm-hmm. in 1993, you know we'd see we'd backstage with Tom in the dressing room or whatever and there'd be a knock on the door and someone would would ask you know, they want you know local a small town reporter which you know this is maybe a, a maybe a 23 year old uh, guy just out of high school or something or come home from college and he's doing a story for his local newspaper and, and so nine times out of ten Tom would say no and uh, no inter- you know no oh, is that right? sometimes he would I mean if he you know if he liked the person or what and sometimes there was mm-hmm. a but for the most part no he you know th- there was a guy what was his name Kennedy was his name in New Brunswick. Okay. Forget it. He's not. Okay. He, he, was, he was a prominent DJ back in those days. And I remember we used to go into town, into the towns that we played. And Whiskey Jack and Graham Townsend was 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 uh, uh, backing Tom at the time. So Graham and I get on the phone and we try to phone the, the the radio stations to get interviews to promote us as much as to promote to promote Tom. And sometimes yes. we'd we'd get pushback. Like I called the guy at some place in New Brunswick. I called this Kennedy DJ, a fairly important guy, and he was quite vocal. He said, "There's no way in hell I'm ever going to do anything to help." stopping Tom Connors not what did you know what the hell did Tom ever do to him you know but uh, exactly that's right yeah but it but I've found over the years, I've even had personal friends say that, uh, knock me down when I say that he was the king of Canadian music. Uh, yeah, well, you know, those yeah. of us who know his music intimately and know the story and his relationship with the country, you know, exactly. I would say Wolf Carter is probably closer to that than Tom. But, you know, yes, I'll, give, true. Wolf, I'll yes. give Wolf that. He was the first and he, you know, he toured um, at a time when touring was incredibly difficult and not profitable etc so in many ways and tom admitted that wilf was his inspiration you know he liked he liked uh, emulated uh, hank snow as well but wilf carter was the guy that he was really trying to duplicate in his career so i give wilf carter and was his hero more or less yeah, exactly yeah. so i understand that you also worked closely with Zomp and tom over the years in uh, your road shows and stuff what was his sh- shows like it, i I was speaking to. Do you know who Mickey Andrews is? Yes. Yeah. So yeah. I was talking to Mickey about this not very long ago because he he and I had both been on stage with Tom for many many shows over the years. And the one thing we noticed, well, a couple of things we noticed. One was shows were, by my estimation, short. I always thought. Mm-hmm. I always thought I could never figure out why. Here's a guy who never went touring very much, but he loved to sing and play music. I could never understand why he asked his opening act to 
perform such a long set before he came out. Yes, true. And uh, true, and he, in yes. fact, he got criticized in the newspaper in in Kitchener and Fredericton too uh, that I remember criticized for his short shows. And uh, so mm-hmm. I can never figure that out. But I will say that I described them. I described them this way because we've tried to build our show on the same formula and that is it's theater yeah it's it's a guy up there singing and playing his music but his shows were as much theatrical as they were musical he would engage with the audience his songs were stories that had a backstory uh, there was always more to it than just the story so for example you know he's he wrote Sudbury Saturday Night but the backstory is that Stockho worked hard blacklisted mm-hmm. in town they would they would they discouraged the radio station from playing the song and you know so there's all these backstories that go along with some of these sto- these songs so yeah the girls they're out the bingo and the boys are getting stinko we think no more of bingo on a Sudbury Saturday night the glass is navel pickle when our eyes begin to pickle and we think no more of Banco on a Sudbury Saturday night. So, and, and Tom... Tom's engagement with the audience, he would talk to the audience, he would encourage them, he would he would basically treat them as though they were in his kitchen. And uh, very unusual. Exactly, that's what I found too. Very unusual too. Yes, approach sure. to, to live performing um, for any act, and most acts would discourage that kind of thing, but Tom encouraged it. And so that's that's what we try to do as well, are very intimate and friendly, and, mm-hmm. and um, you know, there's no pretense in a Stomp and Tom show, so. For sure, for sure. So, what has been in, in your opinion, the lasting legacy behind Tom? Uh, I get asked this from time to time, and I always come back mm-hmm. to I always come back to the songs. You know, in the years to come, in the decades to come, when the country looks back on this character, Stomp and Tom Connors, and they they see a kind of a, a cartoon character up there stomping on his board, and mm-hmm. you know, they, 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 there's certainly that impression and ever you know the perception of him as being a you know a flag waving. Uh, Canadian, a bit ornery, chain smoker, drinker, you know, that kind of thing. Yes. I don't think those are the memories that the country's going to retain. I think the country's going to really, over time, discover and rediscover over and over again just how good the music was, how good those songs were. That's true. We're living with these songs every night, and I have been now for 10 years very closely living with these songs, and our repertoire continues to change, Johnny, because... um, we're discovering new songs all the time and when we bring the song when i bring a song to the band or billy brings a song or douglas brings a song um we sit and we interpret it in our way and it becomes in many cases an entirely new song um and i think that's what's going to be happening in in uh, over the years as people uh, start to discover and rediscover his catalog very true yes and they, as i was saying they're very true to life like not too many canadians or singers in general wrote true to life stories about locations and the people of there correct Jim and Jackie, goodbye John and May, we hate to see you leaving, bound for the USA, but if you don't believe your country should come before yourself, you can better serve your country by living somewhere else. I know the times are changing, factories closing down, but if you stay and help us, we can turn these things around. But if you don't believe your country should come before yourself, you can better serve your country by living somewhere else. And while our politicians divide our precious land, we speak in French and English, but they still don't understand. If you don't believe your country should come before yourself, you can better serve your country by living somewhere else. on heroes they trade our jobs away and we don't need 
need no zeros to come and help us save the day. So if you don't believe your country should come before yourself, you can better serve your country by living somewhere else. And if you should find your heaven where stars and stripes are flown, you'll learn to stand more proudly than you ever stood back home. And they'll tell you that your country must come before yourself, or you'll have to serve your country by living somewhere else. So goodbye, Jim and Jackie. Goodbye, John and May. We hope that you'll be happy living in the USA. Cause if you don't believe your country should come before yourself, you can better serve your country by living somewhere else. If you don't believe your country should come before yourself, you can better serve your country by living somewhere else. I knew very early in my career that there was no way I was going to get people into a hotel door by standing there and singing like the rest of people. I had to do something different. And so let's say the boot and the board got them in the door. Now, friends, following that great part one of a two-part interview, we'll hear the second half on the second hour of the way back on Jamboree. For right now, I'd like to welcome you all back here. It's once again time to turn back the history books and years to the golden age of, of Canadian country music vinyl. But first, I would like to open the vinyl vault door here on the Vinyl Blast from Vinyl Past. <laughs> Now that the vinyl vault door is wide open, let's turn back the years to the earliest recordings of Stomp and Tom Connors, which came out in 1965. I'd also like to say that our dear friend John Arsenal of the fan club of Stomp and Toms on Facebook. John lives up there in Guelph with his dear wife, Kathy. And so I want to thank them both for their contribution to this program today, especially this song. And it's going to be Stomp and Tom's first recorded song that we all know about, at least his first recording that has ever been found and it was off a private label and was on a 45 rpm with that mention i'd like to play the a side of this and it was called move on to ruan welcome in friends <laughs> The day I left Kirkland, my girl's head was circling. I left her with only one shoe on. My baby in larder, she may take it harder, cause I've got a new one in Ruan. I've got a new one in Ruan. I'm a honky-tonk player just drifting along. I move like a leaf the wind blew on. I'll love you tonight and I'll hold you so tight Tomorrow I'll move on the Ruan Tomorrow I'll move on the Ruan Tonight if I gamble, tomorrow I'll ramble I'm a captain that don't take no crew on Goodbye to my Shirley, she's been a cute girly, but I've got a new one in Ruan. I've got a new one in Ruan. I'm a honky-tonk player just drifting along. I move like a leaf blowing blue on. I'll love you tonight and I'll hold you so tight Tomorrow I'll move on the Ruan Tomorrow I'll move on the Ruan Now love is a stranger To some it's a danger To me it ain't nothing to stew on I'll play with your curls and I'll call you my girl But I've got a new one in Ruan I've got a new one in Ruan I'm a honky-tonk player just drifting along I move like a leaf the wind blew on 
from Kirkland to Larder through the town and farther. I've just got to move on the Ruan, cause I've got a new one in Ruan. So I'm gonna move on the Ruan, cause I've got a new one in Ruan. Well, I roamed the country and uh, I gained a lot of experience. I, I sailed uh, merchant sea on the uh, freighters and tankers and uh, I rode the freight trains from coast to coast uh, about a dozen times and uh, hitchhiked all over the place and I uh, met people from small town cities. I met white collar people. I met bums. I talked to them all and uh, I just garnered a, a great deal of experience, for, uh, and it's coming in handy now for writing. Well, yes, friends, once again we have reached the end of the first hour here at the Wayback Country Morning Show in Jamboree. And as we pay tribute to Stom and Tom Connors and what is one of his only gospel-style songs, I like to pay tribute to Stom and Tom with the Battle of Despair. And I do hope you all enjoy it. As I say, this is about the closest to a gospel song that he ever recorded during his career. So here we go with Tom and Tom's classic, Battle of the Sparrow. And yes, it is much the same style as Hank Williams recorded in the Battle of Armageddon. Welcome in, friends. Oh, we know the battle's coming, but the world don't seem to care. But they'll be sorry if this battle is the battle of despair. When people fall a-crying with their faces in the mud, there'll be wailing, there'll be shrieking, but the rivers run with blood. When the sun, the moon, the stars go black, we'll know it's judgment day. And will the world be willing then to get on its knees and pray? They'll be wishing they had Bibles instead of rifles in their hand. And the fear of God will till the sod in the heart of every man. There'll be nothing but disaster, there'll be gnashing of the teeth, and the heavens will be open to the wicked world beneath. And we'll hear the mighty trumpet sounding off throughout the land. Non-believers will believe it when the hour is at hand. We'll see the blessed Savior with the army that he brings. He's the splendor of the nation. He's the king of all the kings. He will wear the crown of heaven sitting on the judgment seat. And the battle of Armageddon will be over and complete. Then the bodies upon bodies in a shambles of the earth. They'll be called to life again to find out what their soul is worth. Come all ye who has been faithful to thy God whom you adore. But burn all ye who evil be in hell forevermore. The battle of despair, it may be this one to come. What's to be will have to be, but let us pray the sainful one. Take the Bible, not the rifle, never kill, just bend the knee. And if we lose or win the battle, we'll still live eternally. When they come up to me and ask me for an autograph or show me a record that they bought or a picture they took, what enters my mind at the time is that because I don't want them to look up to me because I, I feel uncomfortable about being in that position because I know that if I had a chance to sit down and talk to that person, each and every one of them, directly, to say to them that it's because of you that makes me who I am. It's nothing that I've done. It is you. So it is me that should look up to you rather than you looking up to me. That big eight wheeler rolling down the track means your true love and daddy ain't coming back because I'm moving on. Hi, I'm Jimmy Roger Snow, son of country legend Hank Snow. By the way, you're listening to Way Back Country Jamboree with my good friend Johnny Woodlock, right here on CFRC 101.9. 
you stayed away too long I'm through with you, too bad you're blue, keep moving along Now friends, we're sitting on the other side of the 9 o'clock hour That means the second hour of this morning's program And this great tribute to Stom and Tom Connors and his life and career in music We are still coming to you via the Woodlock Ranch and Studios Station in Cornwall, Ontario As well as being heard over CFRC 1019 FM on your local radio dial And worldwide at www.cfrc.ca From the heart of the original capital of Canada The limestone city of Kingston, Ontario As we welcome Welcome you all back into the second hour. I'd like to remember and salute someone who was very near and dear to Stomp and Tom. The man I am speaking of was in many ways a father figure to Stomp and Tom. And that, of course, is none other than old Montana Slim himself, Walf Carter. So I'd like to salute Walf here with the song Stomp and Tom wrote about him called the Walf Carter Tribute. Then we'll follow with the legendary man himself, Walf Carter, and a classic that Stomp and Tom also recorded recorded many years ago titled The Rattling Cannonball. With that, here's my salute to the first king and the true father of Canadian country music. Welcome in, friends. Hello, friends. This is Stompin' Tom Connors, and I'd like to dedicate this song to that old Alberta cowboy himself, Wolf Carter. In the year 1904, upon a cold December morn, in Port Hilford, Nova Scotia, Wilf Carter, he was born, went to work for the local farmers at a very tender age, till the bush camps of New Brunswick hired Wilf for a better pay. And Wilf began to yodel eedle in the backwoods of NB, with his yodel eedle eedle yodel eedle from the Maritimes to Boston, now the wheat fields of the West And the plains of old Alberta, they just seem to suit him best Punching cows and breaking horses was the life he loved to lead And you'd always see Wilf Carter at the Calgary Stampede And Wilf would always yodel eedle on the streets of Calgary With his yodel eedle yodel eedle when he sang, he played the guitar, telling stories that were true. For the songs he wrote were always about people that he knew. And he took his compositions down to Montreal by train, where he made his first recording and was on his way to fame. And Wolf began to yodel eedle on the radio CBC with his yodel eedle yodel eedle just a plain and simple cowboy with that old familiar grin To the USA, Wilf Carter was now Montana Slim From the hungry hobo jungles to the top recording star And the people came by thousands when he strummed that old guitar And Wilf would always yodel eedle in a voice so young and free With a yodel eedle eedle yodel eedle message of my story won't be hard to understand And I think I speak for every hardcore country music fan Though the modern record players have replaced the gramophone I still love to hear Wilf Carter sing and play the cowboy songs And Wilf can always yodel eedle anytime he wants for me With his yodel eedle eedle yodel eedle yeah, Wolf can always yodel eedle any time he wants for me With his yodel eedle eedle 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 Everybody going my way, crawl aboard that old rattling cannonball Gather around me comrades and listen while I tell About the good old rambling days you have heard some tell First I was a hobo, I claimed the rattler's call I took my first wild rambling trip on a rattling cannonball She always blew the whistle on every curb or hill And I always knew the signal by the whistle oh so shrill The hobo loved to ride them, you'd often hear them call It's great to be aboard once more the rattling cannonball Take her away! Down mountain she would roll Seemed the roar and rattle So 
one day would take its toll Years she's been a running, but ne'er did I recall Did I ever see a smash up on a rattling cannonball As I said, boy, I travel, took many a furs wild ride On the good old rattling cannonball, but I stayed by her side Today I am conductor, tell many a story tall But I never put a hobo off the rattling cannonball Slim, take her away. Well, boys, I must start rolling to get her there on time. She's 60 cars from head to tail running the main line. All aboard, we're off, boy, to the happy hobo call. We're headed for a good old trip on the rattling cannonball. The rich man rides the parlor with all his splendor grand. The hobo rides the boxcar, his home's in any land. Years you've had to travel, in style you have them all. Take a trip from coast to coast on the rattling cannonball. I used to listen to uh, old Hank Snow and Wolf Carter on the radio when I was a kid, and uh, this is how I I had the desire. I always wanted to grow up and, uh, you know, do what they did. Following those great classics by Stomp and Tom, and as well as our dear late hero, Wolf Carter, we're back here, friends, on this Way Back Country Jamboree, a morning show. Now, many years ago, I was always fascinated in the history of the South, meaning America, so much so that, in fact, my late granny Marg sat me down one day and had me listen to some of the stories that Stomp and Tom Connors had written about the history of Canada. To say the least, I soon realized that Canada had a lot of amazing songs and stories too. Well, with that mention, I would like to say that Stomp and Tom has been singing the history of Canada for many, many years. And up next, we've got some of those great classic stories of our own country and the stories that, well, Stomp and Tom made come to life in these next songs. I'd like to pay tribute now to a few of these classic songs and the stories of Canada that Stomp and Tom recorded and wrote, including about the steel bridge out in Vancouver, titled The Bridge Came Tumbling Down. Then following that, I will pay tribute to the tragedy that almost got Stomp and Tom killed for writing the song of, named The Resource Crossing Tragedy. And our dear friend, John Arsenault of Stomp and Tom Fan Club, supplied me with a clip out of the Daily Press, Timmins, Ontario, dated Saturday, April 16th, 1966. And it says in this clip from this newspaper, the words to the controversial song about the Resource Crossing tragedy and it goes on to say Tom spent eight hours writing the song and will go on to sing this song public tonight but he has been warned that if he sings it he will be beaten up well friends this song almost cost Tom and Tom his life many years ago because of the controversial subject of this song but anyway we'll pay tribute to it and a storied part out of his life and it's going to be the resource crossing tragedy then we'll re- follow with the feuding Black Donnelly story of the Black Donnelly's massacre, and we'll wrap up with a song going out in loving memory of my late Papa Willie B, who has an ancestor that Stomp and Tom sang about in a song which Freddie Dixon from the Ottawa Valley wrote, titled The Last Fatal Duel. Well, Papa was related to the legendary John Wilson who fought The Last Fatal Duel, so this one will be going out in loving memory of my dad, and also John Wilson. So with that, here's the legendary Stomp and Tom Connors singing a song about my ancestors ancestor and the last fatal duel as well as these other great songs and country music history and hey canadian history too welcome and friends Scarlet roses, the chaplain spread around in the waters of Burrard Inlet, in old Vancouver town, where the bridge came tumbling down. When the bridge came tumbling down, 19 men were drowned in June of 1958 in old Vancouver town. There were 79 men working to build this brand new bridge, to span the second narrows and connect up with the ridge till a big wind hit the bridge and the bridge came tumbling down and 19 men were drowned and the medical corps couldn't be too sore of the rest of the men they found in a 
among the twisted girders One man realized how last night he'd been dreaming And saw before his eyes the big wind on the rise And the bridge came tumbling down and 19 steel men drowned And he saw the fright of the darkest night in old Vancouver town With frogmen in the water by the cutting torches glow they fought to save the steel men from certain death below And pain we'll never know When the bridge came tumbling down And nineteen men were drowned And sixty more that came ashore So thankful they were found It often makes you wonder In strength who has the edge The longest steel beam structure That spans the highest ridge Or the men that built the bridge for the bridge came tumbling down, and 19 men were drowned. But the other men came back again to lay the new beams down. Now if you're ever crossing this mighty bridge sublime, and 19 scarlet roses pass before your mind, remember and be kind. The bridge came tumbling down, and 19 men were drowned. So you could ride to the other side of old Vancouver town So you could ride to the other side of old Vancouver town Just a little bit west of Kappa's Casing Resor Crossing, that's the name Farmers hauled from out of the bushland, all put for the millbound train. Twenty farmers met that night to guard their pulp from a union strike, unaware this night would see the resource crossing tragedy, the resource crossing tragedy. You'll never load that pile of lumber. Said the Union men when they came Though they numbered about 500 The 20 farmers took rifle aim We've got to get our pulpwood out Before the muskeg frost comes out And may God help us all to see No resource crossing tragedy No resource crossing tragedy You'll never touch this pile of lumber But they came, and tragically Three men died that February Night in the year of 63 Eight more wounded, some beat up Tires slashed on the lumber trucks a night of death and destiny, the resource crossing tragedy, the resource crossing tragedy. You'll never touch this pile of lumber. Seven words that spelled out pain for the widows and their children and their men who died in vain. Can anyone forget the bloodiest labor battle yet in all Canadian history? The resource crossing tragedy, the resource crossing tragedy. Just a little bit west of campus casing, they erected a sculpture beside the tracks of the Bushman and his family who live their lives behind the axe. It reminds us in the north not to bring our tempers forth, that there may never elsewhere be no resource crossing tragedy, no resource crossing tragedy, no resource crossing tragedy. Black Donnelly's ride, their killers by their side, down the Roman line till the end of time. Back in 1840-some, to Lucan, Ontario, a man did come, a man who pushed his weight around, and his wife Johanna could slap the devil down. 
with seven sons who fought as well. They opened up wide the gates of hell, and they fired up the land for miles around. The Black Donnellys from Lucan Town. With every glance that a Donnelly gave, came the sound of shovels digging your grave, and many a club there come a crashing down upon the heads of the men around Lucan Town. Down the old Roman line, the further you went, the folks got tougher and meaner bent. And then the Black Donnellys, for their abode, they lived the way down at the end of the road. The Black Donnellys ride, their killers by their side, down the Roman line till the end of time. Old Jim Donnelly killed a man one day, and everybody thought that old Jim had run away. But Jim was home and quite concealed in Johanna's old dress where he still plowed the field. But he served his time, so the story goes. He then came back again to cheat his foes. With seven sons, he robbed and burned till the whole town knew that old Jim had returned. Now they started up a coach line from Lucan down with daily trips on into London town. And to destroy their competitor's route, they cut the tongues of all his horses out. And eighteen men with their clubs in their arms, they marched on over to the Donnelly barn. But a Donnelly boy could fight like ten, and they sore put a licking on those eighteen men. The black Donnellys ride, their killers by their side, down the Roman line till the end of time. They poisoned cattle now by the score. They burned down buildings more and more. They horsewhipped men to make them say that they wouldn't appear in court next day. And every sheriff that the town could find, they met the Black Donnellys and then resigned. For 33 years with their clubs in hand, the Black Donnellys ruled the land. And there came one man into Lucan Town. He was hired to cut all the Donnellys down. A fearless man of a mighty frame, and James Carroll was that man's name. They made him the sheriff, and they followed through and formed his secret vigilante crew. In the old swamp schoolhouse in wintertime, they planned their fatal night of crime. The black Donnellys ride, their killers by their side, down the Roman line till the end of time. In 1880, on that February night, as old Granny had foretold, it was a terrible sight. Old Jim and Johanna and Tom, their son, and Bridget were slaughtered. They axed everyone. And the 30 drunks left with the house all aflame, hell bent for more Black Donnelly game. And from out of the fire and into the cold ran that young Connor boy, just 11 years old. Now the gunshots rang, and they ripped into John, and another Black Donnelly brother was gone. And so the Grim Reaper had had collected his pay, and the other three Donnellys then wandered away. Now the vigilantes, they got away free from the law, but they all died mysteriously. So one word of caution to all who would hate, at the end of your road the black Donnellys wait. The black Donnellys ride, their killers by their side, down the Roman line till the end of time. Fatal duel in this country was fought in the quiet Perth town, where the ghost of Bill Lyon still lingers down at the old burial ground on the banks of the old Tay River in Perth on a cold, misty day. Two young men they met there at daybreak, but only one of the two walked away. This duel wasn't fought for valor, but a young woman's love the excuse. Billy Lyon had challenged John Wilson back to back to settle their views. The last fatal duel in this country was fought in the quiet Perth town, where the ghost of Bill Lyon still lingers down at the old burial ground. There 
seconds called out the ten paces these men with their pistols would take they fired two rounds at each other now young lion lies still in his grave the last fatal duel in this country was fought in the quiet perth town where the ghost of bill lion still lingers down at the old burial ground john wilson stood trial in brockville for this murder was in first degree the crown listened close to his story without warning the judge set him free to duel is a crime in this country but the judge never seen it that way john wilson then married that woman and they lived up in london they say the last fatal duel in this country was fought in the quiet perth town where the ghost of bill lyon still lingers down at the old burial ground the ghost of bill lyon still lingers down at the old burial ground i think it's uh the the story it's a it's a story uh pretty well from beginning to end you can take from the words of it if you listen to the words that uh something has happened and uh it tells the story from the beginning to the end pretty well how it happened it's something like um like a folk song just a old farmer out working in your field hanging down over your tractor wheel this is martin with laughlin i'm the guy that wrote farmer song you're listening to the way back country jamboree with my good friend johnny woodlock right here on cfrc straw hat and old dirty hankies mopping the face like now, friends, once again, I would like to pay tribute to my dear friend and beloved mascot of the of the Wayback Country Jamboree, Simbush the Wonder Husky. <coughs> As we invite Simbush the Wonder Husky onto the program today, she has her top picks of the Stomp and Tom novelty and more traditional non-story songs of Tom's. First, we'll salute some of her favorites, including an all-time classic titled Tilsonburg. Then we'll play the all-time classic from the Newfoundland area of Canada, none other than Margot's Cargo. And we'll wrap up this set with another classic of my favorites, and Simbush has picked one of my all-time favorites here, titled Songbird Valley. And this is a little bit more non-traditional to a Stomp and Tom song, but it is a great song nonetheless, and I do hope y'all enjoy it. So here is Simbush's top favorites today, and thank you, Simbush, <coughs> for your contribution to the Wayback Country Jamboree. Welcome in, friends. Hey, Tom. Tom, you ever been to Tilsonburg? Tilsonburg? My back still aches when I hear that word. While away down southern Ontario, I never had a nickel or a dime to show. A fella beeped up in an automobile. He said, you want to work in the tobacco fields of Tilsonburg. 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 My back still aches when I hear that word. He said, I'll only give you seven bucks a day, but if you're any good, you get a raise in pay. Your bed's already on the bunkhouse floor. If it gets a little chilly, you can close the door. Tilsonburg. Tilsonburg. It was Tilsonburg. Tilsonburg. My back still aches when I hear that word. I was feeling in the morning anything but fine. The farmer said, I'm gonna teach you how to prime. He said, you gotta don a pair of oilskin pants if you wanna work in the tobacco plants of Tilsonburg. 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 My back still aches when I hear that word. We landed in a field that was long and wide with one old horse and five more guys. I asked them where to find the cigarette trees when he said, bend over, I was ready to leave. Tilsonburg. 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 A back still aches when I hear that word. Said to pick just the bottom leaves and 
don't start crawling on your hands and knees. Prime your roll, cause you'll get no pay for standing there picking at your nose all day round Tilsonburg. 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 My back still aches when I hear that word. With a broken back bending over there, I was wet right through to the underwear. And it was stuck to my skin like glue from the nicotine tire and the morning dew of Tilsonburg. 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 My back still aches when I hear that word. Now the nearest river was two miles from the place they were waiting for the boat to come. When I heard some talk about making the kill, I was down the highway and over the hill from Tilsonburg. 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 My back still aches when I hear that word. Now there's one thing you can always bet. If I never smoke another cigarette, I might get taken in a lot of deals, but I won't go work in the tobacco fields of Tilsonburg. 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 My back still aches when I hear that word. My back still aches when I hear that word. My back still aches when I hear that word. Clock. With Margie being a farm girl, she almost took a fit to find the cowsy dungsy clock was really made of it. The clock was from Toronto, and her mind was soon made up. She said to Reggie, get the cow and load her on the truck. We're heading for Ontario, and we're off to make her big. Cause Margo's got the car go by, and Reggie's got the rig. Reggie's got the rig. Reggie's got the rig. Margo's got the car go by, and Reggie's got the rig. Now they're rolling through the Maritimes, the truck was nearly full. The cow began to fall, she was lonesome for the bull. The Mountie pulled them over, is there something I can do? Go right ahead, sir, Margie said, climb in the back and move. Now when they got to Montreal, they missed the auto route. But they found that everyone in town was glad to help them out. The sooner you hit Toronto, they said, the sooner you'll make her big. Cause Margo got the car go by and Reggie's got the rig. Reggie's got the rig. Reggie's got the rig. Margo's got the car go by and Reggie's got the rig. Now the truck was overflowing when Toronto hit the rise. The 401 was full of dung and the cab was full of flies. We're losing lots of money, Rich. We can't afford to stop. We gotta find the place that makes the cowsy dungsy clock. Well, I wish you could have been there on the corner of Queen and Young. When Margot found the company and she dumped her load of dung. And when she found the office, she was singing and doing a jig. Margot's got the cargo buys and Reggie's got the rig. Reggie got the rig. Reggie got the rig. Margot brought the cargo buys and Reggie brought the rig. It was later in the evening when they heard from Mr. Judge. I don't know what they give you, but I'll never hold a grudge. I think a thousand dollars would be fair to hand you down. And 30 days of lodging will be free upon the town. Now Margo says to Reggie, what a hell of a deal we struck. We might have lost a cow by, but still we got the truck. And now they're back in Newfoundland, they're loading up the pig. Cause Margo got the cargo by, and Reggie's got the rig. Reggie's got the rig. Reggie's got the rig. Margo's got the cargo by, and Reggie's got the rig. Margo's got the cargo by, and Reggie's got the rig.
your letter just this morning Where you speak of yesterday When the mill came to our valley And your old friends moved away And like the song birds on your paper That were made in the songbird mill They're all gone from Songbird Valley Like the trees from Songbird Hill Now you say you'd like to see me Where your home sits in the breeze Among the smells of devastation We'll renew old memories But like the song birds on your paper That were made in the songbird mill Your friends are gone from Songbird Valley Like the trees from Songbird Hill And I don't care now to remember Cause I've never been at ease Since the mill came to our valley And destroyed our precious trees But like the song birds on your paper That were made in the songbird mill They're all gone from Songbird Valley Like the trees from Songbird Hill And the song birds on your paper That were made in the Songbird Mill They won't come back to Songbird Valley Just like me, they never will Just like me, old friend, they never will. I knew very early in my career that there was no way I was going to get people into a hotel door by standing there and singing like the rest of people. I had to do something different. And so, let's say the boot and the board got them in the door. Hey folks, I'm Carol Baker. You're listening to the Wayback Country Jamboree with my good friend Johnny Woodlock on CFRC 101.9 FM. I know you're going to love the show. Ten little fingers reached out to rescue me. Now friends, following those great lists of Stomp and Tom classics, we're back here on the Way Back Country Jamboree Morning Show. And it's once again time to take our weekly look at our interview with our dear friend Duncan Fremlin and the second part of this great interview about Stomp and Tom and the behind the scenes stories of Tom's life with a dear friend who traveled and knew Tom very well over the years. Well, following this interview with Duncan Fremlin, the second part of a two part interview, we will pay tribute to a song that Duncan Duncan asked me to play, titled The Blue Barrettes. So with that, here's Duncan once again. Welcome in, friends. So you also have, I understand, a story about you and a pager and stomping No, down. It's a, it was a walkie-talkie. Okay. Yeah, worse okay, worse yes. than a pager because that was a, 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 you could talk back and forth. At least a pager, you didn't have to talk back and forth. So Tom, True. Tom, yes. Tom was uh, a control freak. I can't describe it any other way. He wanted he mm-hmm. wanted to know where we were at all times. Um, I've spoken to Mickey about this too, and we can't quite figure out where this came from. This paranoia about the band disappearing. My theory is that he would be playing a bar, Horseshoe Tavern, or whatever. Time to go on, mm-hmm. and he couldn't find the steel. Couldn't find the guitar player, or the bass player, because they're they're off flirting with a girl or having a having a drink in the back alley or, and he would get stressed yes. about this and he'd get pissed off about this that that's my theory mm-hmm. but he required us all to have 
a walkie-talkie with us at all times. So um, I did have a run-in with him in Quebec City one time when uh, the band I took the band downtown and we didn't tell him because the walkie-talkies weren't working and he got he got totally pissed off on on that uh, on that yes movie. so that was the biggest run in I ever had with him but we worked it out and uh, you know it wasn't it wasn't anything that anybody liked that none of the band members really liked to carry this darn thing around but it was just the way it was you know but it was a requirement it was a requirement yeah. it, was in the, it was in the contract Johnny I said Okay, okay, yes, sure, sure. Now, for those who are wondering about other stories, you have a great book about Tom. Yeah, there's, so there's a written. couple of things. I wrote a book, uh, My Good Times with yes. Tom and Tom. I'm, I've sold, I'm up to 1,500 copies, so that's pretty darn good. Oh, wow. For a, for a Canadian yes. self-published book, that's what they call a bestseller, Johnny. Um, that's true, very if, true. If your listener wants, is if they're interested, it's a series of, sto- of stories, of tales, mm-hmm. of my run in with Tom or the time in the kitchen when when uh, the hockey song was played on my phone or the time when he had the run in with with uh, the the reporter in Ottawa that caused such an international kerfuffle all these stories they're in my book and they're all personal stories so uh, if anybody wants to buy one they can get on my website it's called whiskeyjackmusic.com whiskey with an e uh, whiskeyjackmusic.com and they can order a book and I'll send them a copy Um, I'm also working now I'm glad I'm glad you brought this up because I have a new project I mentioned a few minutes ago Tom's best friend and songwriting partner his name is Gate Lapine that's yes. right yes. so uh, mm-hmm. born in Hull Quebec but moved to Timmins spent most of his life in Timmins met Tom in Timmins and uh, so Gate and I are good pals and uh, he wrote a, a book um, called uh, Hard Knock Graduate and it's not published it's 700 pages he's a he's a brilliant poet brilliant songwriter has written 5,000 songs and his prose yes. his prose is absolutely beautiful to read so I'm I'm publishing his book on a, a separate website and um, um, if if people want to get on whiskeyjackmusic.com they'll find access to this and and what I'm doing is I'm I'm writing the stories I'm presenting his stories I'm uploading them onto this website uh, one at a time over the next few months and uh, and then eventually I'll put it in book form and uh, make a book and start selling those books but th- th- that this is a very exciting project for me because these are stories that you know when Tom wrote his books there's so much he did not write there's so much he did not include. that's true and yeah, this book this true. Kate Lapine's book he was there he was there at the wedding he was there at the TV show in Edmonton he was there and in in some cases there won't have been a stomp and Tom with well, no there's no question but Tom's told me that many yeah. times if it hadn't been for Kate Lapine yes. uh, he would he would not there would there would be no stomp and Tom because when Kate met Tom exactly. back in 1964 Johnny Kate tells me mm-hmm. he was this timid insecure uh, emaciated hungry poor hobo sleeping in ditches his teeth were rot life was not going well he was suicidal uh when he met gate in 1964 um gate gave him confidence encouraged him started writing songs with him gave him a gig at the maple leaf tavern so those time those 14 months in timmins were absolutely pivotal and very important for tom to find out who he was as a singer songwriter and uh very true. So, yes. so I think I think not just not just music uh, fans. I think Kate's story is going to be of interest to anybody who just likes a good read, because these stories true. these stories are are very engaging and uh, um, yeah, very very fun to read. Well, that's great, and uh, they can find that out at Whiskey Jack. Whiskey Jack Music. Dot com. Music, okay. Or if they, okay, if they sure, wanna, and I'll add that to the Facebook. Yeah, I mean, if, if they get on the internet, I, I don't know if you use hashtags or not, but if you if you hashtag Banjo Dunk, B-A-N-J-O-D-U-N-C, hashtag Banjo Dunk, just do that and all my stuff will come up. It's, it's all right. Okay, yeah. sure, sure. Now, I also mentioned to you before that when I met 
like I didn't meet him, but I had to meet him at his gravesite because he wasn't very approachable the four times that I seen Tom. Yeah. Like when Dad seen him back in the seventies, he was right up with Tom next to his truck. But when I seen him, he was not really approachable. He became somewhat of a recluse during his time away. Thirteen years. Okay. He was, he, no, nobody knew where he lived. He wouldn't. He wouldn't. Uh, he had the record company, Boot Records, and they would get. Yes. They would get requests from. Newspapers, magazines, radio stations, even even uh, CBC, Peter Zosky, people like that would reach out to Boot Records looking for Tom, and they would his their instructions were no, Tom does not want to speak to anybody. So oh, wow. he became somewhat of a recluse during during those years from from the my fans and the media, and uh, he never really went back to his old ways, which were as you said. A, a fan favorite. He would go out in the audience, and mm-hmm. you know, if you look at that, if you look at that movie that he filmed back in the '60s at the Horseshoe Tavern, between That's you true. know, between songs when all his guests were performing, he was in the audience sitting around with everybody having a beer. He never did that. Yes. he never did that later on. He never did that later he in never life. Did no, that, no, for sure. No. no, maybe he was concerned about his private, his safety too, because you know. People wanted they wanted a piece of them. They, I, you know, they were trying to yes. they were trying to take the stomping board on the shows. They were they mm-hmm. you know they would have grabbed his hat if they could have. Uh, his fans were true, very you know, true. They were pretty, would have been mob. Yeah, they were pretty. Uh, they yeah. were pretty aggressive, you know, especially in 1990 yes. when he came back. Yes, for sure. I seen him in Shawville, Quebec, and there was fifty thousand people there. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. That was about 2004, 2005. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Mm hmm. So you also have a tribute show to Tom, Stories and Songs. Yeah. It's not your typical tribute show, Johnny. It's not. It's not. We don't dress up like Tom and go out there and stomp on a board yes. or anything. Um, we were Tom's. We were one of Tom's. He called. He told me is one of his favorite bands. And we performed Whiskey Jack. I'm talking about performed with him many times over the years. So we've taken mm-hmm. our experiences with him, our personal experience with experiences with him, and and uh, created a show uh, that contains some of these stories built around the songs. So we t- we sing the song, we give the backstory, and um, and so the, uh, you know after ten years, it's become. Quite the uh, quite. It's it's like I said too. It's theatrical. It, it's it's very engaging. It's funny as hell. Um, yes. It's a comedy show as much as anything because Tom is a very funny man. So, yeah. So mm-hmm. it's 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 not a tribute show in the traditional sense of the word. It's more of a it's more of a salute to you know a, a respectful salute to this great Canadian. Okay, sure, sure. And I also understand that, I hope I have this correct, you have a show coming up here in Kingston on May 9th? Yeah, I hope you're going to be there. Yes, I'd love to be. Yes. Yeah, so For we've sure. never played Kingston. So there's some cities that I've been trying to play mm-hmm. for 10 years, and we finally this year, uh, Ottawa's one. London is another. We did. Okay. We, we played. We played all of these cities with Tom over the years. Kingston was yes. another one. Could never figure out why. Could Whiskey Jack in the early years, back in when we first started touring in the seventies and eighties, we played Kingston all the time. The Frontenac Hotel or the Grad Club, or you know, there were many places. The Rodeo Roadhouse. Yes, that's right. Yeah, that's right. And uh, mm-hmm. so I'm really pleased that we're coming back with the show uh, this year, and. Uh, so, uh, you know, anybody in the area certainly make sure everybody knows about it because uh, where where's it going to be? Fire. It's a new it's a new facility. Okay, yeah. okay. Well, I'll, I'll have the details up for everyone anyway. Yes, for sure. Yes, definitely. And and you also said Ottawa. Yeah, we're playing uh, the Red Bird Live place in Ottawa. Great place. Oh, great, great, great place. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's yeah. great. Yes, for sure. Now, drifting away from Stomp and Tom for a few minutes, what is your plans for 2024? I know the year is still young. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I'll be, I'm, well, I'm working on that new that new literature literary project with yes. Kate Lapine. He also gave us some songs that 
he and Tom started, he gave me 15 songs and he said, Gates 86 and he can't play guitar much anymore, arthritis and all that. Oh, okay. So he gave me these songs and said, here, they're yours. Finish them or do with them as you want. So we're, my, my guitar player and I are, are working on these songs. We have three completed. We play one of them in our show. I'm working on a. Okay. I'm working on a video actually, and I'll release the video of this song soon. Um, nice. Yeah, and uh, mm-hmm. and then we got a we got tour happening. You know, we're going like I said, we're doing Kingston, Tweed, London, Ottawa, Northern Ontario, uh, Brockville. We're doing Brockville, Chatham, Ontario, probably, and then we're going down east in October, New Brunswick, Nova Scotia. Prince Edward Island. So, yeah, no, it's a lot happening. A lot happening. Okay, sure. Sounds good. Well, we'll be sure to look for you on the road for sure. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. So, in closing today, what song of Stomp and Tom's can I play for you following this interview? Oh, let's see. You know, the one that we just started doing this song in the show, and there's a backstory mm-hmm. to it. And uh, he called me up to the. So, this is from the 1993 album. It features Whiskey Jack backing up Stomp and Tom, called Doctor yes. Doctor Stomp and Tom A, and there's a song on there called uh, uh, Blue Beret. It's uh, okay, yeah. and yes, uh, so I remember it there's well. a banjo solo in the song. And when Tom produced the video for this song with the uh, with the help of uh, the Canadian military, Canadian government, it was a big a big production at the time. He liked my banjo solo so much, he doubled it up in the video so you can hear it twice in the video oh wow so yeah um so this will always be one of my favorites uh, it's called blue beret okay well we'll get that on for you duncan and thank you for a wonderful conversation my pleasure good talking to you john yes bye 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 now We are the Blue Berets We're up and on our way With another UN flag to be unfurled Till the factions are at bay And peace is on its way We'll display our Blue Berets around the world Yes, we are the Blue Berets We're always proud to say We'll stand between the mighty and the frail where children cannot play Because war is in their way We shall send our Blue Berets in without fail For we are the Blue Berets And though we're far away Tell our family and our friends who come to call If you count the lonely days You'll see your Blue Berets Marching home again to say we love you all the blue berets we're marching on our way where the bullets fly and rockets madly hurl and where hungers never cease and mothers cry for peace we try to bring some hope to an ugly world we are the blue berets we're marching on our way with another un flag to be unfurled Till the factions are at bay and peace is on its way, we'll display our Blue Berets around the world. For we are the Blue Berets, and though we're far away, tell our family and our friends who come to call. If you count the lonely days, you'll see your Blue Berets marching home again to say we love you all. If you count the lonely days, you'll see your blue berets marching home again to say we love you all. Gotta keep those cards and letters coming in, honey. Say you love me time and time again, honey. 
Howdy, friends and listeners of the Wayback Country Jamboree. Have you ever had a comment or suggestion or a request for this program that you listen to every weekend on Sundays from 8 to 11? Well, have you ever wondered how to contact your host, Johnny Woodlock, or co-hostess Simbush the Wonder Husky? Well, we're inviting y'all to write us here at the ranch. By snail mail, just send your letters care of Woodlock Ranch Studios and care of Mr. Johnny Woodlock, P.O. Box 21. 007, that's 21007, Cornwall, Ontario, K6H7H8, Canada, or by email at waybackcountry at cfrc.ca. And we'll be sure to write you all back. In the meantime, we'll be waiting for your letters by the mailbox, so send those letters on in. Now, back to the show. So keep those cards and letters coming in. Now, friends, for those who have read the Stomp and Tom story, or his two books that he had published back in the 90s, it is a very interesting story to read. But I would like to pay tribute to one of his best friends here from his hitchhiking days, and it, this was his hitchhiking buddy back in those days, none other than Stevador Steve, also known as Stephen Foote who became a true troubadour of the East Coast Canadian country music. And so with that said, we'll pay tribute to the East Coast with a classic titled East Coast Ballad. Here's Steve Adore Steve. Crashes on the rocks along the shore Seagulls scream and sea oceans roar And the wind plays the music for the song of the sea That old east coast is calling to me Well, I've crossed this land of ours and the frozen north as well My heart is pounding restless for that heavy ocean swell where the shrimp boats and the lobster traps and nets and trawlers be That old East Coast is calling to me Where the broken down narrow lines lie sleeping in the sand Dreaming of the days of wooden ships and iron men Hardy men and fish and schooners reap the harvest of the sea That old East Coast is calling to me Along into the night the lighthouse keeps its vigil on the deep As the fog banks roll past the town that's half asleep and the little fish and villages lie nestled down the bay That old East Coast is calling me today Yes, I've crossed this land of ours and the frozen north as well My heart is pounding restless for that heavy ocean swell Where the shrimp boats and the lobster traps and nets and crawlers be That old East Coast is calling Finally, one day, uh, I uh, run away for good, and a school made of mine, uh, Stevador Steve Foote. Well, he calls himself Stevador now. He's an entertainer and a songwriter as well. Has a fine job. And uh, him and myself decided to hit the road, and we took off all across Canada, went out west, and then we went down through the state. And then I guess for the next 10 years, that's all him and I done. We just uh, roamed, rode the freights, and what have you. Well, now, friends, following that classic by Stevedore Steve, the old hitchhiking partner of Stomp and Tom back in the early days of his career, I'd like to pay tribute to two gospel songs as we send us up into 10 o'clock hour here this morning. First will be old Montana Slim himself, Wolf Carter, and it is no secret what God can do. And then following that, we have another one of the songs that Stomp and Tom recorded in the style of gospel music. And it'll be, of course, the story of Jesus, which was also taken off of his Christmas album. With that, we'll talk to you on the other side of the third and final hour at 10 o'clock. Good morning to my listeners out there in Radio Land. The 
chimes of time bring out the news another day is through someone slipped and fell was that someone you you may have long for added strength your courage to renew do not be disheartened for i've got news for you it is no secret what god can do what he's done for others he'll do for you he sure will with arms wide open he'll pardon you it is no secret what god can do he can do anything there is no night for in his light you'll never walk alone he'll be with you always feel at home whenever you may roam there is no power can conquer you while god is on your side just take him at his promise don't run away and hide it is no secret what god can do he does wonders what is done for others yes he'll do for you with arms wide open he'll pardon you it is no secret what god can do in a land so far away so long ago lived a boy with his parents meek and low by miraculous birth he came to this earth the savior of this wicked world of woe now his mother was a pure and shining dove and joseph showed the boy his tender love for an angel of light had appeared on that night proclaiming him the son of god above now the first of many wonders to behold was when mary couldn't find her 12 year old in the temple he was found teaching wise men all around as they marveled at the wisdom that he told soon the people from both near and far away came to hear the precious words he had to say and when thousands wanted food he fed the multitude with five loaves and seven fishes on that day now he brought the dead to life in galilee where the deaf could hear and all the blind could see and when all the dumb could talk he taught the lame to walk saying now pick up your cross and follow me now it wasn't long before the final test betrayed by one of twelve he loved the best and for thirty pence we're told the son of god was sold and upon the cross they put this man to death as he died he told the world they should not grieve and he later showed them why they should believe 
For he died to save all sins And came back to life again And we celebrate his birth each Christmas Eve We celebrate his birth on Christmas Eve Jimmy Rogers Snow, son of country legend Hank Snow. By the way, you're listening to Way Back Country Jamboree with my good friend Johnny Woodlock, right here on CFRC 101.9. You stayed away too long. I'm through with you. Too bad you're blue. Keep moving along. Well, yes, friends, now we're sitting on the other side of the third and final hour at 10 o'clock here this morning. We're still coming to you via the Woodlock Ranch and Studios in Cornwall, Ontario, and we can also be heard via www.cfrc.ca through the World Wide Web and also locally at historic CFRC 1019 FM on your local radio dials from the heart of Limestone City of Kingston, Ontario, Canada. Now, as we welcome you all back into the third and final hour of this morning's tribute to Stomp and Tom Connors, I would like to mention that it was many years ago that a man known as Don Messer, the King of the Fiddlers of the East Coast, was born. He was born May 9th in 1909. Sally passed away on March 26th in 1973. However, during his time here on this earth, he would gain great fame as the fiddling icon of the East Coast of Canada. So much so that Stomp and Tom forever immortalized him in the classic The Don Messer Story. So next we'll hear this classic, then we'll follow that with the legendary Don Messer himself and his fiddle rendition of the classic Liberty Two-Step. With that, I'd like to welcome you all to the third and final hour this morning. Good morning to all my listeners out there in the radio world. He was born in old New Brunswick in the early part of May 1909. Six years old, he played the fiddle. At the barn dance on the old York County line Every year, Don got better He dreamed about that fortune down the track Then he came down to St. John City Where he formed the old New Brunswick Lumberjacks Don Messer played rings around the mountains He played reels all across the plain played all that kind of music that has made the country proud to say his name. Soon his band would have a singer. Charlie Chamberlain would join the Messer fleet and travel to Prince Edward Island to play on radio for 12 bucks every week. On the air, right after supper, Commencing in the year of 39, the man would say, It's old Don Messer and the islanders from down the maritime. Don Messer played rings around the mountains, he played reels all across the plain. He played all that kind of music that has made the country proud to say his name. Coast to coast with Don and Charlie. Duke Nielsen and Ray Simmons played it up. Warren McRae with Cease McAkern. Now the Islanders went touring to the top. How Charlie sang with Margaret Osborne. And Waldo made the old piano twang for the Queen. They played in concert, and it was magic how Don Messer's fiddle rang. Don Messer played rings around the mountains, he played reels all across the plain. He played all that kind of music that has made the country proud to say his name. Seventeen years on television. From 
56 to 73. Don Messer made his mark forever, the fiddling king of country music history. Throughout the world, it's undisputed. Don Messer and the Islanders were tops, and away down east, beside the ocean, the kind of music they began will never stop. Don Messer played rings around the mountain, he played reels all across the plain, he played all that kind of music that has made the country proud to say his name. Has made the country proud to say his name. Signing an autograph, no. I don't enjoy that uh, as much as I would if I had more time with each person individually to, you know, shoot the guff with them for a couple of minutes each or, you know, or something like that. That would be better than, than to just, uh, like, have an assembly line for autographs. This, I don't, uh, I don't really get any kick out of that, uh, except for the fact that they want the autograph, and so I'll, I'm there to give it to them. But uh, I would rather uh, uh, talk to them, you know. Now, friends, it's once again time to pay tribute to the East Coast of Canada in the segment we like to call the Great Atlantic Lullaby. And you know, for those on the East Coast of Canada, they kind of are proud of the fact that Stomp and Tom came from Prince Edward Island. However, he was born originally in St. John, New Brunswick in 1936 this coming Friday. With that mention, I would like to pay tribute to some East Coast favorites, but first of all, let's send some love down to Pugwash, Nova Scotia and Peter and Myrna Trenholm this morning. I would also like to mention that Peter has a great gospel show which airs every Sunday and Monday over CFTA 107.9 FM from Amherst, Nova Scotia. And anyway, 
Anyways, back to the music now. First, we'll remember a classic that Storm and Tom wrote and recorded about New Brunswick, titled New Brunswick and Mary. Then we'll follow that with a classic about the graveyard of the Great Atlantic Ocean, titled Sable Island. Then we'll travel over to the Garden Island of Prince Edward Island and his homeland, and it'll be the Confederation Bridge. Then we'll wrap up with hearing an all-time f- favorite of the Newfoundlanders out there and on the rock of Newfoundland, and it'll be called Moon Man Newfie. With that, I hope y'all enjoy these great classics and our trip to the Maritimes this morning. Welcome in, friends. <laughs> I get heart sick and blue for New Brunswick and you since I left for the west and the prairie and the stars up above know the two things I love are my home in New Brunswick and Mary. I'll bet the salmon are all running now. Island more than any other island has t- 
taken more ships and the lives of men away. It has taken more ships and the lives of men away. Many hundred men through the years have been banished by their kings to the graveyard of the old Atlantic Sea, where they killed each other off to keep on living until death itself could never set them free. They still walk among the wrecks of Sable Island, forever calling sailors to their doom. When the fog is thick, ahoy, there's a vessel on her journey to that land beyond the tomb. So sailor, take warning and pray every morning when it's your luck to sail on a dreary day. For Sable Island, more than any other island, has taken more ships and the lives of men away. It has taken more ships and the lives of men away. Confederation bridges our nation to an island so rich and so rare. I'll be driving Northumberland straight to that wonderland garden that's cradled out there. And I'll bet there's no bridges through high mountain ridges on land or on sea to compare. With the Confederation that bridges our nation to Prince Edward Island so fair. And it's calling, calling me over the blue waters rolling And soon I'll be strolling out there Down by the ocean where the island devotion to friendship is found everywhere And it's calling, calling me over the blue waters rolling And soon I'll be strolling out there down by the ocean where the island devotion to friendship is found everywhere. Confederation bridges our nation to an island so rich and so rare. I'll be driving Northumberland straight to that wonderland garden that's cradled out there. And I'll bet there's no bridges from high mountain ridges on land or on sea to compare. With a confederation that bridges our nation to Prince Edward Island so fair. And it's calling, calling me over the blue waters rolling and soon I'll be strolling out there. Down by the ocean where the island devotion to friendship is found everywhere. And it's calling, calling me over the blue waters rolling and soon I'll be strolling out there. Down by the ocean where the island devotion to friendship is found everywhere. And it's calling, calling me over the blue waters rolling and soon I'll be strolling out there. Down by the ocean where the island devotion to friendship is found everywhere. And it's calling. Calling me over the blue waters rolling And soon I'll be strolling out there Down by the ocean with the island of ocean You might think it's goofy But the man in the moon is an oofy And he's sailing on to glory Away in the golden dory He's sailing on to glory Away in the golden dory 
Cut fish in from Newfoundland He dreamt that he had three wishes And he took Mars and all the stars And he turned them into big fishes He said the sky was much too dry And he made a wavy motion And the moon like a boat began to float Upon the starry ocean And you might think it's goofy But the man in the moon is a newfie And he's sailing on to glory Away in the golden dory Sailing on to glory Away in the golden dory One night he strayed to the Milky Way To cast his nets upon it He spied the tail of a great big whale And he harpooned Haley's Comet He never had a pot for the fish that he caught So he had to use the Big Dipper And the sun by Jove was a very good stove For cooking up smelts and kippers And you might think it's goofy But the man in the moon is a newfie And he's sailing on to glory Away in the golden dory He's sailing on to glory Away in the golden dory Dory. Now the northern lights that seem so bright like nothing could be grander Well they're just waves of the moon boat made by the Newfoundland commander And don't you sigh and say oh my what gross exaggerations Cause he'll tell you the dream was true and Codfish Dan awakens And you might think it's goofy but the man in the moon is a newfie And he's sailing on to glory away in the golden dory He's sailing on to glory away in the golden dory you might think it's goofy, but the man in the moon is a newfie, and he's sailing on to glory, away in the golden dory, sailing on to glory, away in the golden dory. They, they live close to the land and close to the water, and they, they like music, and I think this is probably the, the reason why they're so musical down in the Maritimes. Just a country sad story full of sunshine and glory, won't you come for a visit? Hi everybody, this is Wayne Rostad, and you're listening to Way Back Country Jamboree with my good friend Johnny Woodlock on CFRC 101.9 FM. Oh, that somebody will love you the way that I do. Now, friends, for everybody listening up west of Kingston here, y'all will remember the Great Horseshoe Tavern where Stomp and Tom performed back in the 60s. Well, I would like to pay tribute to him and his regular appearances on the Horseshoe Tavern stage back then with a couple of live covers of classics that he recorded during a live album titled Live at the Horseshoe. With that mentioned, I would like to remember two favorites of the Stomp and Tom era of the Horseshoe Tavern. And first of all, be his own version of the old classic Mule Skinner Blues and he sure gets into this song. Then we'll follow that with a classic as he says sets his golden Skinner's Pond voice as he jokes about in this next classic and it'll be Green Green Grass of Home. With that I do hope y'all enjoy these classic live versions from the Old Horseshoe Tavern in Toronto. Okay it's time it's time for me to uh, give you what I caught myself it's a very contagious disease, and uh, if you wake up about 4 o'clock in the morning, and you fall out of bed, you start stomping your foot to try to get up, you look around for an old black cowboy hat, you look in the mirror and your eyes are crossing on you, and you start laughing at yourself, you know you got a very familiar kind of a disease that I've had for some time. I caught it from a fellow that joined the mule train in the old days and he found out he was allergic to something the mules had. He had an awful bad case of the mule Skinner Blues that I'd like to pass on to you tonight. Good morning, Captain. Ha 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 ha! 
time that uh, I sung an American song. This here, this here is a song that made so many singers famous that I just thought if I turn my golden Prince Edward Island voice to it, I'd probably become famous too if I tried to sing it. It's called A Green Green Grass of Home. I thought that would bring a tear to everybody's eye. Town looks upside down as I lay here on the ground. There's the old freight train that I just fell off of. Down our road I look and there goes Bessie. Darn good cow, but she sure looks messy while grazing on the green, green grass of home. I told you I'd do a job on it. The old outhouse is still standing, though the catalog is used and gone. There's the old oak seat that I used to sh sit on. <laughs> Down the path I'd run and hope to make it. But there were times when I had to fake it. That's why we've got such green, green grass at home. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you never know what Stompin' Tom's gonna come out with next. In my Renfrew County home where I was born. Good day, folks. I'm Vic Garbutt of Valley Heritage Radio, and you're listening to your good friend and mine, Johnny Woodlock, on the Wayback Country Jamboree. Stay tuned. In my Renfrew County home where I was born. Well now, friends, it's once again that time in the program to welcome our very special second guest onto the Wayback Country Jamboree Morning Show. This next guest is an administrator of the Stompin' Tom Fan Club on Facebook, the Stompin' Tom Connors Fan Club, and I would like to invite Alan Dalton onto the program this morning as we talk about some of the missions of the fan club as well as some of his own memories of seeing and meeting Tom many years ago. And then following this, we will play a classic 
that Alan requested I play titled The Song of the Irish Moss. So with that mentioned, I would also like to just say that Russell Albert was Stom and Tom's adopted father in many ways, and it does mention his name in this classic titled The Song of the Irish Moss. So with that, here's Alan Dalton from the fan club of Stom and Tom Connors. Hi, Johnny. How are you? It's a pleasure to talk to you today. Well, it's a pleasure to be talking to you, too. So, let's go back to when and how this all began, your your uh, fanship for Stomp and Tom. Well, it happened as a kid, I guess. Um, I have fake, fake memories of going to see Tom in Peterborough with my mom at four years old. I think it was in the okay. early 70s at some point. Um, and hearing his music a lot around the house, and then... My dad, being from PEI, had a lot to do with it, too, and living not far from where Tom grew up. And, yes. And being virtually the same age. So I guess it all oh, wow. it always hit close to me because when Tom talked about, you know, living in that part of PEI, my dad would have been living pretty much the same life. Okay, sure, sure. And so you have... Uh you're keeping the legacy alive through his uh, fan club on Facebook. Would you tell our listeners what it's called? It's uh, the Stomp and Tom Connors fan club. Uh, it's on okay. Facebook. I kind of got invited into it by the two other guys that helped run it, John Arsenault of Ontario and uh, Brian Lund from out in BC. And here I am living in PEI now, so we're across the country now, which is kind of... So it's coast to coast, exactly. That's probably the way Tom would have wanted it. To, so. That's true, very true, yes. Yeah. Now, I also understand that you do some interviews yourself. I do. Um, I guess I started when 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 John and Brian asked me to be a co-administrator on the Facebook fan club. Um, yes. I just I wanted to do something different with it and make an impact, so... I had already become friends with Duncan Fremlin from Whiskey Jack. Yes, and, of course. Uh, yes. So I started doing some interviews and tried to hunt down people that played in Tom's bands over the years. And, so and what do you find is the secret to interviews? Um, well, just make it like a conversation. You know, don't make it yes. like a pressure situation. Just kind of sit back, relax, and just talk and... I don't make people talk about anything they don't want to. Like, I'm not here to dig up dirt on Tom. Exactly. You know? For sure. For sure. Yes. Yes. And so uh, you have some favorites, uh, uh, favorite Stomp and Tom songs. What ones speak out to you? Um, well, you know, he's got the hits that everybody likes, the Bud, the Spuds, the hockey songs, which are all great. But he was more than just a songwriter of, you know, kind of, funny kind of songs like he did his or novelty yeah yes. no, like not even i wouldn't even say novelty but it, he wrote some pretty serious songs like i mean he wrote songs that taught us about canadian history that's right um for sure but he also was capable of writing like a beautiful song like um some of the songs like he did a song called if a memory was a melody it's just a beautiful written song he did a song called yes. songbird valley which is sung by jp cormier and dave gunning a lot when they do their live shows who used to be in tom's bands okay um yes so they i mean that's sure. when they do their version of it it's just a beautiful song so he was for he, sure he was capable of writing all kinds of songs you know it wasn't just the yes. entertaining party kind of songs that he was known for and how has you how have you seen the stomp and tom legacy grow since you first heard about tom it seemed to grow. Well, I, I, I don't remember much about when he was out in the 70s when he was, mm -hmm. you know, I was too young to really see that, you know, when he was playing at the Horseshoe and all that stuff. I really saw it kind of grow when he came out of retirement and the people were kind of happy that he was back and they started giving him the due that he was he was deserving, you know, like when they gave him honorary doctorate of laws degrees at three universities and he got the Order yes. of Canada, and mm -hmm. people just started respecting him more. And when the hockey song got picked up at all the hockey games, it just... It's, and Hockey Night Tonight. Yeah, and, it seemed to grow mm -hmm. more after that. I see. Okay. And so what is your mission behind the fan club on Facebook? Well, like you said before, it's just about keeping... I want to make sure he keeps... The music stays alive. Yes, you know, I, sure. I want to make sure people don't forget about him and he falls by the wayside. 
Mm-hmm. You know, I, I just, you know, it's just making people aware that who he was and what he did for Canada and maybe yes. encourage somebody else to kind of follow in his footsteps, if you will. Mm-hmm. For sure, for sure. And so what is your thoughts on how Stomp and Tom has uh, molded or uh, changed the face of Canada uh, legacy-wise? Well, um, first of all, I believe he was doing what he did with the Canadiana thing yes. when it wasn't cool to do so. For sure. And, for sure, yes. and he made it cool for bands like the Tragically Hip to do what they did. Like, I mean, Tragically Hip was... You know, they were praised for writing such Canadian songs. But I don't Mm -hmm. think they could have done it if Tom didn't do it first. That's true, yes. He, like, uh, molded that uh, idea, more or less. Yes, for sure. Yeah, he was doing it before anybody else really did it, like, on a regular basis. And he just, you know, if he didn't pave the way, I don't think the Tragically Hip could have gotten away with it and been praised the way they are. Yes. And what is your thoughts on how he is remembered? Um, it's, it's like well, you I mean, mentioned the tragically hip. Yeah. Um, I mean, like I said, I believe they, they were probably influenced by him more yes. than, you know, they, you know, they sat there and go, Hey, Stomp and Tom can write a Canadian song. Why can't we? Exactly. You know, yes, um, for sure. and it's great that he's remembered by, um, well, living here in PEI, they've got the Stomp and Tom Center that opened up a few years back. Yeah. Which is a really good way to keep his memory alive because it really was something that he had planned before he passed away. So it's great to see it there. If, it is, for sure. If anyone actually comes to PEI, it's definitely worth the drive up there to, yes. to see it. Cause and I understand you've been there. Yeah, I do some stuff to help them out every year mm-hmm. um, by promoting. Well, what's your thoughts on it? It's fantastic. Like, I mean, Anne Murray's got an Anne Murray Center in Spring Hill, Nova Scotia. That's right. I believe yes. there's a Hank Snow Museum in Nova Scotia somewhere. That's right. Liverpool, yes. Um, sure. You know, Shania Twain had a Shania Twain Center, I think, in Timmins. And, mm-hmm. you know, it's great that he has that, you know, because yes. he really put that part of PEI on the map. Over its, that's for sure over the years and mm-hmm. it's great to see it there you can go you know you can go have a bite to eat there they've got live concert venues um amazing yeah it's, yeah. A, it's really nice to have that there so i'm hoping that really helps keep his legacy alive is it like a museum it's a small museum area it's got a bunch of artifacts you know like gold records and oh nice it's got some yes. awards he was given he was given the key to the city by like I don't know three or four cities, and I think there's oh, wow. a, there's a yes. couple of them there. Um, it's got like an old stool and the pitcher he used to drink from on, on stage, and it's really how a p- Prince Edward Island uh, man drinks uh, uh, water, as they always said. Yes, yeah, <laughs> and of course they they re um, they fixed up the old schoolhouse that used to be. Um, yes, open back in, back in the early days, like it got. That's what I remember. Yeah, it got shut down for a while there, but then it mm-hmm. reopened in the 90s and shut down again. So it's nice to see that they didn't let it fall apart. And for sure. It's been redone and fixed up, and it's good to see that it's not just about Tom. It's about, you know, a piece of history on the island of what school was like back then. That's right. Mm-hmm. So. And so what is your thoughts? Uh, I understand that you collect Canadian music. What is your thoughts on stations not playing 100 percent canadian content i know stomp and tom had a had a strongly opinions on that yeah i see where he was coming from um mm-hmm. like yeah they have the canadian content rule but it doesn't yes. seem to me like it's do- I-, I feel it was designed to give more canadian artists a chance and a leg yes. up but it seems all exactly. they do is play the canadian artists that already have a a standing you know what i mean you're yeah they just, not they, the individuals they play shania twain they play brian adams who are great don't get me wrong yeah but do they need the exposure 
No. They no, whereas that not band... Not as much, anyway. That band who plays at the bar down the road from you put a CD out, maybe playing them on the radio might be kind of... That's right. You know, that's yes. what I think it was designed for, and I don't think they really do that too much. No, they don't. Uh, I know I'm honestly uh, guilty of it myself. I play more U.S. than I should, but, uh, yeah, I always wondered what people's opinions were on that, yes. But you play you play stuff locally. Like, I was listening to a couple of your shows online, and you were... Yes, I do. You know, you yes. played some stuff out of Ottawa, and you played stuff mm-hmm. out of Quebec, and, you know, you touch regional, and that's that's what I think Tom was about, too, you know, like you know giving that guy a chance that normally wouldn't get the chance elsewhere for sure for sure yes so what is your hopes in the coming years or decades to to see uh stomp and tom's legacy remembered well i'm i've seen his songs used in a couple of commercials um yes if that's what it takes to keep him alive you know hopefully the tiktok trend maybe people Mm -hmm. use some of his music in some of those videos just you know, I'm hoping, you know, whatever way it takes, I hope it goes with the technology and the times, you know what I mean? I hope they can bring it along. And, That's true. And yes. make sure the future generations go, hey, who is that? You know? Exactly. I, I'm hoping that's what happens, you know, and I hope it keeps and, going. Uh, as they as he said in his last letter carry the keep the flag waving or what have you yes for sure yeah that's definitely Mm -hmm. um that was that was probably a strong message that he left before he passed away like it was amazing that he was still of sound mind to be able to write a message like that to everybody yeah Mm -hmm. and it was it was fantastic to see that that's right. Mm-hmm. So, being a Canadian, what does uh, when somebody says to you "Stomp and Tom," what does that image? What is the image you get? Um, I get the image. It's not an image so much. It's more of a. It's somebody who really stood stood by his principles, and and toughed it out, and mm-hmm. did what he thought was right, and did what he was going to do whether it meant he got played on the radio or he became a big Nashville star or anything like that. He did what he wanted to do. He found his niche and he went with it. For sure. For sure. Yes. And so the last question for today, I'll keep it short and sweet, but uh, what song of uh, Tom's can I play for you following this interview? Well, I grew up in Ontario, but my dad was from PEI and I'm going to try and stick with the part of PEI my dad grew up in and where Tom grew up uh, I'd like the song of the Irish Moss okay sure sounds good because it's, Alan, it's yeah. such a part of where he grew up and where my dad grew up so it hits close to home and it's just uh, you know it's nice that he wrote a song like that for the, pe- yes, for the people up there well thank you and you have a wonderful day yeah, you we'll too. be in touch thanks Johnny talk to you yeah. soon bye 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 <laughs> Down on old Prince Edward Island, when the winds are on the blow, and the ocean water's rolling through the reefs and rocks below, and the Irish moss comes drifting where the white cap waters roar. With my scoop and my fork and my wagon and horse, I'll be heading on down the shore. With my scoop and my fork and my wagon and horse, I'll be heading on down the shore. On old Prince Edward Island, where the Irish moss is found, with bags and ropes and baskets, they come from miles around. Crashing through the water, being careful not to fall, cause one good dash and a hell of a splash, you could lose your overalls. One good dash and a hell of a splash, you could lose your overalls. There's horses in the water, and horses on the road, and here comes old Russell Elward, and he's hauling up another big load, and the party lines keep ringing, and the word keeps passing on, you can hear them roar from the Tignish shore, there's moss in Skinner's Pond, you can hear them roar from the Tignish shore, there's moss in Skinner's Pond. On old Prince Edward Island, there's one big hullabaloo. The boys and the girls and the old folks, they're gonna make a few bucks too. Getting wet to the neck in the ocean, where the waves all turn and toss. But it's a free-for-all and they're having a ball, they're bringing in the Irish moss. It's a free-for-all and they're having a ball, they're bringing in the Irish moss. 
Now the moss plant boys are waiting to pay so much a pound. And there goes a guy on horseback, and they both look damn near drowned. But all those smiling faces just mean one thing to me. For every man with a calloused hand, there's a blessing from the sea. For every man with a calloused hand, there's a blessing from the sea. There's an islander somewhere lonesome, cause he can't be home today. To have a little sip of the moonshine and haul another load away. In the land of the great potato, where the lobster feeds her wild. And we thank the boss for the Irish moss on old Prince Edward Isle. We thank the boss for the Irish moss down on old Prince Edward Isle. I uh, write about the people that uh, I expect to be singing to. Like, uh, I uh, I might be walking down the street and uh, see a street cleaner or a streetcar driver or a truck driver or something and maybe stop and have a conversation with them uh, just the time of the day and uh, you'd be surprised uh, some of the stories that they have to tell. And uh, then I uh, digest it all and uh, go home and as soon as I get in the mood, I... Write two or three songs sometimes a day. Well, yes, friends, we're coming up on the 11 o'clock hour pretty fast here, but we would like to pay tribute to the 88th birthday of Stomp and Tom Connors. And I would also like to mention that Stomp and Tom recorded right up to about six months before he passed away. And even rumors are floating around that he left a treasure trove of unreleased material behind. However, if we ever see this released or not is anybody's guess. But with that said, we hope that one day we will hear some new Stomp and Tom recordings. Anyway, he also recorded and released his final project, an album titled Roads of Life in 2012, a short time before his passing. And with that mentioned, I would also like to say that one of the last recordings that Stomp and Tom ever recorded was titled the Flanders Field song, where he set the old classic poem in Flanders Field to music. And so, in honor of our war veterans past and present, and also our dear king of Canadian country music, second only to Wolf Carter, that is, Stom and Tom Connors, here's our tribute to the war veterans in his very final song from 2012 and his Road of Life album in Flanders Field. <laughs> Flanders fields where poppies grow between the crosses row on row our graves are marked as here we lie out where the larks Still bravely singing fly Yet scarcely heard Amid the guns below In Flanders fields Where the poppies grow In Flanders fields Not long ago We felt the dawning and the sunsets glow. We lived in love and with great pride we left our homes and then for freedom died. But are we dead? Do you answer no? In Flanders fields Where poppies grow In Flanders fields We fought our foe And from our hands now The torch we throw as it burns, please 
knees hold it high For if you break the faith with us who die We shall not sleep Though fair winds blow In Flanders fields Where poppies grow We shall not sleep Though fair winds blow In Flanders fields Where the poppies grow Yes, friends, it's once again that time in the program to say so long from the Wayback Country Jamboree Morning Show. And as we say so long, I would like to once again say that we have a clip here from the king of Canadian country music, Stompin' Tom Connors, and how he would like to be remembered in his own words. What would I want to be remembered as? I think uh, somebody who just um, wrote a song about what he's seen and what he experienced and what he knew at the time that was happening, wrote about it, and uh, doesn't deserve any more than any other proud Canadian would deserve, and that means all of us, really, just to become Canada conscious. And yes, those are the final words of Stompin' Tom Connors, as he was laid to rest 11 years ago, March 6th, 2013, at the young age of 77. It was a sad day in country music history, and Canadian country music as well, but it was also his last letter to his fans that he would write these words. Hello friends, I want all my fans, past and present, and future, to know that without you, there would have been no Stompin' Tom Connors. I must now pass on the torch to all of you to help keep the maple leaf flying high and be the patriot Canada needs now and in the future. I humbly thank you all one last time for allowing me into your homes. I hope to continue to bring a little cheer into the lives from the work I have done. Sincerely, your friend, Stompin' Tom Connors. Now that was the way we woke up, sadly, 11 years ago, March 6th, 2013. However, since then, this letter has become a true piece of Canadian history. And these songs today are just touching a little bit of the music and the career that Stompin' Tom had. A legend, in my opinion, that had a huge impact on Canadian lifestyle as well as Canadian people. He grew from a little boy in PEI into a huge icon of Canadian country music. With that, we will say so long for today as we play out three classics of the Stompin' Tom legacy, including a song that he often wanted to be remembered for, and also I have heard that it was his favorite song of all the songs he ever wrote, titled I Am The Wind. I should mention that Stompin' Tom is laid to rest in the town of Erin, Ontario. I've been to its gravesite, and I should just tell a little story here that when I asked the wind at his gravesite if Tom was there to make a wind, all of a sudden, this great big wind came up and blew the flag that was beside his grave. With that mentioned, I will say that we'll say so long for this morning, and so with that, I want to thank Tom for many years of music and many memories along the way, and even though I only got to see him four times, he'll forever be a member in my Hall of Fame of Canadian country music. So long, friends, and we'll catch you all next week. And may God bless each and every one of you till we meet again.
again Right or wrong I am the wind I am the wind Eternal wind Around the door Between gods and men And if you see songs like but the spud from the bright red mud and the gumboot clogger root so long stomping tom may god take care of you me and my wife and kids we all sing along driving around moncton town singing the hockey song we were to it and at it and we was at it and to it until we tuned our attitude in so long, stomping Tom, until we meet again. Well, so long, stomping Tom, I can't believe you're gone. So long, stomping Tom, but at least we've got your songs. Like Margo's got the cargo bay and the old muckaluck shoe. So long, stomping Tom, may God take care of you. So many people I've not met, but yet I know by name. Like poor old Ben down in the pen and that gal Red River Jane. Or potato and tomato driving the Windsor in their car. And see walking past the pawn shop is Luke with his guitar. Well, so long, stomping Tom, I can't believe you're gone. So long, stomping Tom, but at least we've got your songs. Like the TTC Skidettler and Goodbye Rubberhead too. So long, stomping Tom, may God take care of you. Well, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, they're all hanging on every word. While you're singing songs of Saskatchewan and tobacco from Tilsonburg, a million drunken angels are singing with you tonight. And when you see my mom down in the front row, could you tell her I'm doing all right? And so long, stomping Tom, I can't believe you're gone. So long, stomping Tom, but at least we've got your songs. Like Big Joe Mufferall and Sudbury Saturday night. So long, stomping Tom, may you rest in peace tonight. So long, stomping Tom, may you rest in peace tonight. His songs spoke to common people about things they love and understand, like ketchup, potatoes, and tobacco picking, and the struggles of the everyday man. His memory will live on forever through the messages in the songs that he sang, in his wife and sons and daughters, and through the millions of his fans. Canada is so much a better place because of Stomp and Tom, the legend, the man. Another show is over, another day gone by, with good friends all around me, oh how the time do fly. 
Hello, friends and listeners of the Wayback Country Jamboree. Yes, this here is your old host with the most country west music, Johnny Woodlock. Reporting for the Wayback Country Jamboree, a division of Woodlock Ranch Studios, Cornwall, Ontario. The views and opinions during the show do not reflect those of the CFRC Airwaves or CFRC Station. With that, I hope you all have a wonderful day and may God bless each and every one of you till we meet again. Yes, I know we'll meet again. Another place, another time 